The Su-57, a Russian, a beast, a supervillain, unstoppable by any fighter in the world, but one, the F-35, an American, a beast, a superhero. This is a death match between these two fifth-generation fighters, a real-life version of Top Gun's Maverick piloting the F-35 to take on the Su-57 Felon, a jet the movie describes as enemy strike jet. But in real life, the bad guys do win, and with the Su-57 having undergone the longest list of upgrades before possibly taking off to take part in the Russian invasion of Ukraine, how will the F-35 fare against the most powerful Russian fighter in history? But first, a look at some of the F-35's own upgrades, because the American camp has been quite busy too. The F-35 upgrades began in 2019 and are expected to last through the mid-2020s. Known simply as Block 4, this batch of upgrades gifts the F-35 with 1. Bigger brains in the form of new computer processors for greater computing power and a larger memory unit. And then, to enable agile software development through open system architecture for seamless future upgrades. Block 4 also comes with 2. Improved battle space awareness, thanks to an enhanced panoramic display and new navigation updates, allowing for some see-first, shoot-first action. Next up on this blockchain of upgrades are 3. More weapons and new engines, that see the F-35 employ 17 additional weapons and wield powerful adaptive cycle engines developed by a team of General Electric and Pratt & Whitney. These weapons and engines combine to increase the operational flexibility of the aircraft and its area of influence. Finally, the F-35 is treated for 4. Better communication across domains. Here, advanced networking and interoperability improvements enable 21st century information requirements to be fused and shared across all military domains, as this can only maximize the capability of a joint force. The remotely operated Video Enhanced Receiver, or Rover, is only one of such systems that bring this concept to life by enabling ground forces to see what an aircraft or unmanned aerial vehicle is seeing in real time. These upgrades are proof that one of the best ways the F-35 wins a fight is by deterring aggression. That is, to become lethal enough that it'll be suicidal for any other jet. That is, except for the Su-57. And the battle begins. We now take a look at the core factors of each jet to determine which would likely come out on top in a head-to-head -head, and which would, well, be roasted in a cloud of its own smoke. The entire fifth-generation class of aircraft is heavily dependent on stealth capabilities. And so, neither the F-35 nor the Su-57 is found lacking here. The F-35, for one, was designed from the ground up with stealth in mind. Its manufacturers, Lockheed Martin, aligned its edges, serrated its skin panels, and masked the engine with easy-to-maintain fiber matte skin for low observability. They also reduced infrared and visual signatures, enabled the reflection of radar waves, and used strict controls of radio frequency emitters, all playing their role in giving the F-35 an ultra-tiny radar cross-section, lower than that of a metal golf ball. The Su-57, which is the first aircraft in Russian military service to emphasize stealth, responds to this stellar stealth capability with aligned edges of its own by carefully angling the leading and trailing wing edges, control surfaces, and serrated skin panels to reduce the number of directions the radar waves can be reflected. Its canopy is coated with 70 to 90 nanometer thick metal oxide layers, which enhance radar wave absorbing to minimize the radar return of the cockpit by 30% and protect the pilot from the impact of ultraviolet and thermal radiation. In a funny twist, only conspicuous, susceptible to clutter, imprecise, low-frequency radars are able to spot both jets with relative ease due to a phenomenon known as Rayleigh scattering. But again, these radars are conspicuous, susceptible to clutter, and imprecise. And that's where the threat of being spotted ends for the F-35. For the Su-57, however, its manufacturers, Suhoi, really only emphasized frontal stealth, with RCS-reducing features most apparent in the forward hemisphere. The shaping of the aft fuselage, for one, is less optimized for radar stealth when compared to the F-35. Possibly as a result of cost reduction, or the Russian doctrine of operating the aircraft within the umbrella of friendly integrated air defense systems, a doctrine that could ripple into how far the engines can thrust the aircraft 
since the jet might not be traversing continents during missions after all. The F-35 operates a single engine, while the Su-57 is a dual-engine aircraft. On the F-35 is the Pratt & Whitney F-135 low-bypass augmented turbofan that provides 43,000 lbf of thrust with afterburner, thrusting the jet to a top speed of Mach 1.6, 20% slower than the Mach 2 top speed of the supercruise-capable Su-57 with afterburner engaged, thanks to a pair of MPO Lyulka Saturn Isdelia 117 that produce a combined thrust of over 63,000 lbf. But what the F-35 lacks in supercruise capability, it makes up for in stealth. The engines on the F-35 are stealthy by having a low observable afterburner that incorporates fuel injectors into thick, curved veins. These veins are covered by ceramic radar absorbent materials and mask the turbine. Its low observable axisymmetric nozzle consists of 15 partially overlapping flaps that create a sawtooth pattern at the trailing edge which reduces radar signature and creates shed vortices that reduce the infrared signature of the exhaust plume. The F-135 PW600 engine for the F-35B, a variant of the F-35 designed for the U.S. Marines, supports short takeoff and vertical landing by incorporating a shaft-driven lift fan, or SDLF. This SDLF was designed by Lockheed Martin and developed by Rolls-Royce as a key technology for the F-35 displaying the most impressive use case and performance, so much so that the system, officially known as the Integrated Lift Fan Propulsion System, was awarded the prestigious Collier Trophy in 2001. The Su-57 does, however, make a clap back with its all-angle thrust vectoring capabilities that enable the jet to supermaneuver like a gymnast in the sky. Both planes are fitted with the most advanced avionics and armament their respective countries have to offer. For the F-35, the AN-APG-81 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar, AN-ASQ-239 Barracuda Electronic Warfare System, AN-AAQ-37 Distributed Aperture System, AN-AAQ-40 Electro-Optical Targeting System, and AN-ASQ-242 Communications, Navigation, and Identification Suite, all combine to provide rapid beam agility, multiple operational modes, all-aspect missile launch and target tracking, 10 radio frequency antennas, all-aspect radar warning receiver, self-defense against missiles, the detection and jamming of hostile raiders, laser targeting, forward-looking infrared capabilities, long-range IRST functions, and an impossible level of sensor fusion to give the pilot and friendlies an omnipresent tactical picture of the battle space without compromising stealth. All of these are made possible by a software running on a shocking 8.6 million lines of code, which is a lot of lines of code, more than the 4 million lines of the Su-5 software. But this isn't a coding competition, and in terms of avionics, the Su-57 has its own statement to make. Its central integrated management system fuses all the data from the SH-121 radar and electronic warfare radio electronic system the 101KS Electro-Optical System, multiple N036-1-01X Band Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA, radar, and two N036L-1-01L Band Trans Receivers for friend or foe identification and electronic warfare. For the total integration of avionics systems, maximization of pilot situational awareness and reduced workload, the Su-57 is also the first fighter ever to mount a DIRCM anti-missile system to protect the aircraft from infrared homing missiles, giving the jet a chance and motivation to respond with the firepower of its own. Both the Su-57 and F-35 are armed to the teeth with the longest array of long-range, medium-range, and short-range missiles that hunt down their prey hungrily and autocannons to rain hot metal on threats. But with more rounds expected for the F-35, as one of the tasks of the multi-role fighter is close air support that's close enough to justify the retirement of the much-beloved A-10 Thunderbolt. For the Su-57, however, the priority is mainly air superiority, as was hinted by its recent upgrades. The original Su-57 is more 5th generation than 6th generation, but the Su-57 with these upgrades is more of a 6th generation fighter than any fighter in operation today. First is the support for the highly precise highly maneuverable KH-47M2-derived Mach 10-speed hypersonic ballistic missiles. 
The new Saturn 30 engines also come into play to provide arguably more thrust than any other engine on any other fighter on the planet. The Su-57 is also upgraded to integrate the most sophisticated forms of artificial intelligence available, such as loyal wingman drones, a feature expected only of sixth-generation fighters. Another of such features are laser defenses and directed energy weapons, where the Su-57 can use laser turrets to blind incoming missiles and wield the laser weapons under development to take out targets. But plans and reality are often very far apart for the Russian Air Force, and many of their planned upgrades don't even almost come to life. Still, they're marketed and publicized to make a false representation of the might of the Russian military. This media deception has particularly been brought to light in the Russian invasion of Ukraine, where Russia has looked anything but fine-tuned. In addition to that, Russia, so far, only has five production Su-57s of the 76 ordered, while the U.S. has built over 800 F-35s to date, which tells us two things. Firstly, that the F-35 fleet is more ready for a battle than the Su-57, and secondly, that you should subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. That would be all for now. Thanks for watching.